Right, a few questions before we get to the start of this video and they're for you. The question is, I wanna know what is your handicap? The second thing I wanna know is, when you hit driver, what is your ultimate aim, I suppose? Hit the fairway, is that good enough? Second question, irons. Aiming at the green, what is it you wanna do? Hit the target, I assume. And then when you've got a wedge in hand, what kind of shot do you play? Do you like to hit that one, that low zipper that takes one bounce, checks and stops? They're all big questions that you need to answer. You see, the thing is for me, is unless you're at the top end of the golfing spectrum in terms of your ability, then I reckon the golf ball you choose to play with is irrelevant. Well, almost. So today I'm going to be testing two golf balls out here on the golf course. One is the leading golf ball on every tour in the world and the other is from a supermarket and I reckon you're wasting your money on one of the two of them. So earlier on this morning I hit two balls off of the first tee with driver and uh, well what happened? Which ball performed the best? Well, the ball, one ball ended up just out into the rough here. Both really, really good strikes, by the way, and more than happy with. And one ball ended up in the middle of the fairway, probably another, I don't know, maybe 20 yards further on. So what happened? Is that the better ball or is that the worst ball or was it down to the performance of the individual? Well, it's ultimately down to the performance of the individual. One ball was slightly right of fairway and ended up in the rough. One went down the middle of the fairway, got a bit of a kick on and ended up another 20 yards on. The performance of the balls was identical in my opinion. The only thing that differed was the performance of the individual. And in one case, I got it right down the middle and the other, it leaked out a little bit right. So as far as driver's concerned, there's nothing to split the two golf balls in terms of their performance. So the next question is, and I'm 70 yards out, I've got a 58 degree wedge in hand. What is it I'm looking for? Well, from here on in, I'm looking first of all to give myself a birdie chance. You can see from the two shots that I've played in, they're not brilliant. One's gone a little bit long, directed the flag, and one just tugged a little bit left. But what happened in terms of the golf, court, golf ball's performance and what they did from what I can see up here, we've got a camera planted on the green so you can see better how they've reacted, but they again did exactly the same. We're coming from slightly elevated positions, so more difficult to get that ball to stop. But from what I can see, they came, back, uh, came down from a similar sort of angle stopped and spun in terms of control in exactly the same way so yet again 70 yards out 58 degree wedge in hand i can't see any difference in terms of which ball has performed better for me now earlier on this morning i collected plenty of dry ball data using trackman to see how these two balls differed in terms of their performance so we've got a number of shots hit with driver with mid iron and with wedge and this is what I found. As you can see from the data, there's very little to split these two balls in terms of their performance. Arguably, there's a bit more spin on that pitching wedge in terms of the Pro V1, which could come in handy. But we all know how incredibly good the Pro V1 golf ball is, but it does come with an incredibly high price tag. So the other ball in question, like I said, is from a supermarket. It is from Costco and it is the Kirkland signature ball. It's a three piece ball. It's got urethane cover. I cannot believe how these are priced. And my question is, why are we spending so much money on a ball that potentially we can't, due to our lack of skill set, get the true benefits from? So one thing I mentioned earlier on in the video was about quality of strike and your ability. I can't decide how well that would have reacted on the green because unfortunately I couldn't hit it. That was the Kirkland ball by the way, but the second thing of interest was this was the Pro V1, which I had right at the flag. I've just half repaired the pitch mark, which was right by the flag. And as you can see, it's ran on another 12, 15 feet, maybe a little bit more than that. And we were playing a little bit downhill and maybe a little bit down breeze looking at the flag, but yet again, it just goes to show these things don't just stop by themselves. It's quality of strike that is majorly key to how that golf ball performs. So whilst, yeah, it's done all right, arguably could a less expensive 
supposedly poorer performing golf ball, maybe that would run through the back. I don't really know, but all I'm seeing so far is everything that's happened in terms of the golf ball's performance, well, it's majorly been down to my own performance and quality of strike. Well, the last one wasn't so good, but the idea was simple. There was alternate balls there, and I was just trying to see if there was any difference in terms of the feel between the two. And honestly, if I was blind tested, I can see the net logo on the ball. Unfortunately, if I was blind tested, I really do believe that I cannot tell the difference between those two balls in terms of sound and feel in and around the green for that short game piece. And I've very much found the same with putter as well. So, if you can find the difference, tell me in the comment section below because, uh, well, if you can, you're a better man than me. Now, I've had to double check this because I bought these Kirkland golf balls a couple of days ago and I was adamant in my head they were 27 quid and then I started to work out price per ball because what I haven't said yet is that's 27 pound for two packs of 12. So that's right, that's 24 golf balls for 27 quid. It is, in fact, the correct price. So you're buying a three-piece urethane golf ball covered for £1.10, £1.15 a golf ball. Now you compare that to the Pro V1 at near on four quid, and there's a huge, huge price difference. And I'm not sure we're seeing out here on the fairways, nor in terms of dry ball data, that kind of significant difference, if there is a difference at all, for our level of ability. So really happy with both those wedges in and uh, in terms of strike the tightest ball which is to the left got a slightly higher ball flight um, nothing to separate them in terms of strike but from what I could see back there they both seem to stop fairly quickly and looking at the pitch marks can't really see perhaps that's one there they've again stay, uh, stopped in a very similar sort of fashion so Again, what I'm not looking for, people with wedges, I think, again, we play, um, we play golf with some myths in our heads that it's all about spin. And uh, people get really excited when they see a ball zip back and spin backwards. Well, that's okay if you can control that spin and you understand where you want to pitch the ball and spin it back to. But I would argue that not many of us know how to control that spin and do exactly that. So if I can get a ball to just come down and stop where I'm aiming, I'm more than happy with that golf ball's performance. And in that case, yet yeah, again, they've both done exactly the same. I cannot see what splits these two golf balls out in reality, out here on the golf course. I've seen nothing at all to suggest there is any reason to pay so much money for a Pro V1. Right, so that's me done as much as I can do in terms of dry ball data and out here on the course. And uh, like I've always thought, it's almost mystical golf at times when we buy into sort of... Uh, concepts that they certainly exist at the top end of the game and like i said at the beginning of this video if you're a really really good player in terms of quality of strike in terms of how sharp your short game is then maybe you'll see the ultimate benefits of paying for a titleist pro v1 ball or similar but the reality is that most of us don't have that kind of ability and what I've seen in terms of the Kirkland Signature Ball's performance, it's been really, really impressive. And yet again, to be honest with you, there are multiple sort of uh, balls in the top echelons of the tightest equivalents. And there probably are a lot of three-piece ball with urethane covers out there in the marketplace as well. So I don't think we need to pay any great attention to these two balls that I've used today. But all I wanted to demonstrate was that like in most things, don't buy into what you see on the TV what you hear a lot of from the top, top players, just think about it and how it impacts on your own personal game and whether or not you've got the quality in your swing to actually justify from buying this type of product. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found different, then by all means, let me know and uh, get that conversation going down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. Thanks to Carden Park for having us and I'll see you all soon.